candles and carols and Christmas with you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Movie Nights and a very Merry Christmas to you. If you celebrate it, I don't know. If you don't apologize about that, you're going to be a little disappointed in this movie. Anyway, you're ready for the sequel no one asked for? Last year, I covered a heartwarming holiday film about the power of kidnapping starring Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez, wherein Melissa Joan Hart kidnaps herself a fake boyfriend and comedy ensues. This sucks. Holiday in Handcuffs came out in 2007 and was bafflingly ABC Family's highest viewed broadcast ever. No kidding, it's like the holy grail of made-for-TV Christmas movies. That is the goal people who are pitching these things are told to strive for. They knew to strike when the iron was hot, because last year, about a decade after Holiday in Handcuffs, the dream team was back together. Oh. Congratulations. Well, that was awkward. If you laugh, I'll kill you. Perhaps a spiritual sequel, but definitely going for the handcuffs crowd, Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez were paired up again to warm our hearts in a very merry toy store. They're the Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan of the cheap made-for-TV holiday movie with an okay premise world. A Very Merry Toy Store is about Connie Forrester and Will DeNova, two rival toy store owners who must join forces to take down a larger toy company that's come to town to wipe out all the local toy shops. Cool premise, a couple problems. Number one, these toy stores are right next to each other. Like, how could they possibly have expected to do any good business? Number two, they're all just selling the same stuff, which is a bunch of Hasbro crap. It's just... it's just the same. Good over toys, toys where you can pre-order the all-new Princess, Princess Alicia, Alicia doll in Snow Castle. Castle. This, this is Will speaking. speaking. How may I help you? I mean, it'd be one thing if maybe the local toy stores were, like, hand-making their toys or selling locally made products, but it's just the same thing, except they overprice everything. So, I mean, of course people are gonna go with the cheaper option. I mean, sure, it's got a bigger selection, but lower quality. She's making some sort of point about, like, a hardware store here, but it's supposed to be a parallel to her situation, which doesn't really work because, again, it's the same inventory. If Big Kevin James moves in, you'll be purchasing lower quality Hasbro games. Ah, they got the My Little Ponies and Tara Strong. Cute. Get those Mountain Dews and Dr. P's out of here. They didn't pay for us to shill for them. Sometimes it's like subliminal Hasbro advertising. Like they got a stealth the toy in there. The gnome is in the home. That is clearly a troll doll with a beard. And is it really good cross promotion to have the villain selling Hasbro products as well? Could have had the dude initially like try to buy them out or something, but no, he just moves in across town and tries to run a business, unlike these two losers. Let's be real, they were tanking their own shops way before Paul Blart Toy Mogul showed up. Your grand opening is on Saturday. How did you manage to keep it quiet for so long? He didn't even advertise his opening. He's not even a good business person and he's still doing better than them. They just go around bugging the mayor to help them with their problems. Like, doesn't he have mayor things to do? Why is he so scared of them? What do they have on him? You know why they call coffee mud? Uh, because it was ground a few minutes ago. Old joke, man. I'm not that old. This should be called Local Toy Shop Owner Bullies the Movie. Why are we supposed to feel like the big toy shop owner is the bad guy here? If anything, Mario Lopez is the one who acts the most evil. With Foresters? Have the hurricane? I'm sure you heard about the recall. Well, sometimes the wheels fly off at high speed. Hello, Foresters? Uh, hold it. Hell, Tara Strong is more of a villain. I am the shoplifter. But why did you... I wanted you to notice me. Melissa Joan Hart almost went bankrupt! You monster! Okay, okay, okay. Well, big toy shop owners also kind of mean to kids and make shady deals and says things like, in a tizzy. You're right. I'm in a tizzy. <gasps> Language! But any man with two pictures of himself floating alone in a void is a man I personally trust. A very merry toy store falls short in many areas, including... The bad effects. It's good they want to make things seem more Christmassy, which is more than most Christmas movies filmed in the summer do, but... These effects are just hilariously terrible. 
You got fake snow, a ludicrously unrealistic old photograph in front of one of the old stores. Could they not take an actual picture of someone in front of the storefront that they use in the movie? Superimpose signs in a CGI parking lot. Oh no! Oh wow, holy shit, it got worse. And my personal favorite, the green screen bobsledding scene. Oh no! Man, oh man, it's beautiful! This scene is like the Phantom Menace pod racing bit if it were the equivalent of the Jurassic Park harmonica cover. I didn't come into a very merry toy store with high expectations, but they were met and exceeded. Yeah, <laughs> dead. Connie's kid better have won, or Santa over there was gonna give him coal for Christmas. Why did this need to happen? It didn't. But thank you just the same, movie. The shining star of this movie is absolutely the rival kid's flunky, though. Hey, Boots, where should we go to celebrate after you win next weekend? You're the only one who makes me feel alive, Boots. Mom, I think Will might be almost as smart as you. Ah, it's an acting fiesta! Nice of you to drop in. No! Nice of you to drop in. You're a thief, kid. A liar and a thief. Just like this movie, pretending this song at the Christmas carnival actually has a piano accordion in it. But hey, if you like slow montages set to music that'll make you feel safe, this movie's got you covered. When it's snow. Break down a list of things this film half-asses. Number one, the half-assed rivalry. This whole thing is so weak sauce, it's barely a premise. I don't buy this rivalry between Will and Connie at all. How's Denova's up the street? <sighs> I cannot say enough about it. She's actually promoting him. What kind of Christmas versus movie is this? That'd be like if Deck the Halls was about Matthew Broderick and Danny DeVito begrudgingly buying each other Christmas lights. Or if Battle of the Bulbs were actually funny. It's just not realistic. We get one scene of them fighting before they call each other up deciding to sabotage Kevin James' lesser known brother. And this is apparently because of their family history? Like her dad hated his uncle or something? Yeah, a real Romeo and Juliet situation. The Monopolies and the Cap Guns, both alike in their lack of dignity. In fair New England we lay our scene. Ah oh yeah, because her dad and his uncle were business partners who had a falling out, and then Will's stupid uncle decided to open a rival toy store like two doors down. What an idiot! This sucks. As a throwaway joke, all of their employees are either friends or dating, which is kind of chuckle-worthy, but sort of undercuts the whole... premise of the movie, huh? Like two scenes later, they're friends. End of rivalry plot. And the cover, huge spoiler. Which brings me to, two, the half-assed romances. A third of the way in, these two are basically dating and stay that way through the rest of the movie, barring a one scene fight. They make a handsome but predictable couple. Then you get the Sabrina reunion with Beth Broderick playing Melissa Joan Hart's mother with the great payoff of nothing. It's a holiday in handcuffs slash Sabrina extravaganza. I too recognize these things. She gets romanced by Grandpa Brian Dennehy and it's uh, suitable? The itsy, bitsy spider. Have a nice day. Man, she loves these dramatic exits. I know I do. Hmm, playing the field, huh, old man? And you got Tara Strong and Connie's dumb brother. These two are so stupid. <laughs> How would they ever work? All these romances are based on rivalry and deceit. Everyone's in it for themselves. You don't have a piano, do you? But I've been giving you lessons every day for three weeks. And they were worth every penny. 
I am the shoplifter. Why did you... I wanted you to notice me. These relationships are built on a foundation of lies! Mm. Ma'am, he's gay. Speaking of Connie's dumb brother... Three, the half-assed jokes. I'd give the humor of this movie a rating of a soft chuckle, definitely not any yuck factor, unless you count the bobsledding scene. Most of the groaners are gonna come from Connie's brother, who is written in typical bad, stupid character fashion. I'm gonna wave my enchanted mare's wand seven times. But I keep that wand under lock and key because it's- Joking. Oh no. I forget the little dotted line that shows you where to cut. <laughs> It's funny because the jokes are thoughtless and nonsensical. But none are as bad as the movie thinking Neil Armstrong is a good running gag. Hey, Roy! Neil Armstrong, Roy! Neil Armstrong! Buddy, you're the one in outer space. It takes approximately six billion years to get to the explanation for that joke, and it's not even a punchline. And I cruise up and start yelling, hey, Neil Armstrong! Like the first man to walk on the moon. I was calling him the space cadet. It's 10 minutes between those scenes. 10 minutes to explain that to the audience. How is the timing this bad? What? Like maybe if you'd switch those scenes around, like he explains it to everyone at the table and they're like, well, no one's gonna get that. And then when he says it to the King of Queens, he actually gets it. So that would be something, but but it's just nothing. It's less than nothing. It's minus comedy. What is with the Neil Armstrong thing? Then we have... Four, the half-assed team-up. There is so little tension in this thing. Here's how they fight fire with fire. An old city ordinance, a late night toy redelivery, and a free pancake breakfast. This guy was threatened by a free pancake breakfast? They're all gonna tank. Sabrina better be careful, everyone knows the Spellmans have a crippling pancake addiction. The zookeeper's plan? Car bomb. <laughs> Just kidding. Instead, we get an action-packed, hilarious court scene! This involves some shady doll paperwork forgery with the mayor's brother, played by William Ragsdale, conspiring with Big Toy Man. And his name is Pete Griffin? You think that's bad? One time my neighbor was a vampire. Hehe. <laughs> Guess we figured out the secret to Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez's eternal youth. Oh well, everything is easily solved with some security cam footage in a dimly lit office. Two weddings and a funeral. Merry Christmas! Everything's normal again. Yeah, it's pretty convenient if you ask me. Mm hmm. Lazy, you mean? Hmm, interesting of the movie to just burn itself like that. Admirable honesty. You think that's bad? Wait until you see Holiday in handcuffs. Well, that was awkward. If you laugh, I'll kill you. A very merry toy store is a typical made-for-TV Christmas movie with some silly nods to Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez's past. It was generally a light chuckle fest, and the bobsled scene killed me. If you are into movies of this ilk, it will check all of your boxes. Personally, I thought Holiday in Handcuffs was better, but I like that this exists. Whatever you decide to do this December, I hope you have a wonderful holiday break, a great time with your loved ones, and a very merry toy store.